Hello everyone, today is Thursday, October 24th, 2019, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending today. Looks like the links are starting to get out there, but if you're not getting links, I guess if you're here, you're getting links, but if you're trying to get in live, let me know. We need to figure out what's been happening there because we used to have about 10 times the amount of people that we have here now live. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often sum it up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then, borrowing a line from Greg Morris. All right, what are we talk about? Well, current market conditions, and that's going to be the focus of the show, as you'll see in one second. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, just to keep my ADD out of the way, keep them relative to what's on the charts, and when we open up for live charts, you can ask about other things too. We can always come back to the presentation. I can draw on the screen or whatever. So just hold off on anything not related to what we're gonna talk about. And then when we get to the live charts, hold off on your live stock picks until we get there, and then just ask about one at a time. That's for your benefit, so I can see which ones I covered and which ones I did. We should have plenty enough time to get to all of your stock picks this week. So what are we talking about? Well. I want to come back to this winter watch thing and basically yeah the market's been improving but i say let's not start kissing each other just yet and that'll make a lot more sense after we go through everything and then whenever i i don't know what i'm going to talk about which is usually most thursday mornings especially lately since i've been doing so much other things such as the trading simplified show for stock charts which is a even though it's a, only a half an hour show there's a lot that goes into that show and so i've been really busy with that so i'm having less and less time to think about the week of charts all week because i'm thinking about that show anyway long story endless so when i don't know what i'm going to talk about i immediately come back to patience and i went through a few presentations this morning that i've done previously on patience and then this morning I said, well, what's relevant right now? And what's relevant relevant right now, easy for me to say, is the dead money reports. And it seems like nearly all of our positions, in fact, all of our positions recently, except for one that shot up 60% in one day, hit the initial profit target, and then just kind of petered out over the next few days, except for one, it's really required a tremendous amount of patience. So. We're going to get into that in just one second. Before we get into that stuff, is winter still coming? That bastard John Snow talked about winter coming forever, and then it finally did come. So the question is, are we out of the woods? Or are we back into the woods? And the woods has a little bear in it. Now, as I've been saying quite a bit, the market on the surface still looks pretty good. You can see we're above the... 50 day moving average again and well above the 200 day moving average and we're not too far away from all time highs and what's also kind of interesting is the 200 day moving average has been positive for quite a while that's the one on the bottom and then as i said last week the 50 day turned back up so just about oh two weeks ago the 50 day moving average was headed lower and we were trading below it so the market was starting to look a little questionable now, if we take a look at the percent away from new highs, you could see that we're pretty close to all-time highs in here. In fact, I drew a little line this morning at 1%. If you look at this little indicator up top, you'll see it says TFM 10%. Well, that's a weekly or that's used on a weekly chart, but I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at that on a daily chart. And this tells us how far away we are from new highs. And you can see we're a tiny bit away from all time highs. In fact, less than 1% away. Now, the thing to remember is we're close, but you still have to get there. And more importantly, you have to stay there. And what's kind of interesting is the market sort of took off and then it just sort of drifted in here towards those old highs. And then so far we've had 
a bit of a stalling action today after a strong start. So it's like the market was sort of, the point I'm trying to make is we were off to the races and then we're kind of just drifting higher in here and we can't seem to get to those new highs just yet. Now, the reason I said and stay a minute ago is because it wouldn't surprise me at all if this market went on and made new highs. And as I often say, stealing a line from Linda Rasky, which she said she got off the floor somewhere probably, the market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most. And the market will also do a corollary, which is the market will do what it has to do to not only fool the most amount of people and frustrate the most amount of people, it will often do the obvious in an unobvious manner. So to me, it looks like it's making this big old picture top. But what's going to happen first, probably to fool the most amount of people, to frustrate the most, is it's going to bang out new highs and then roll over. So hopefully that makes sense. But a lot of times markets will do just the opposite of what you think they should do. As I think I've gotten from Linda quite often, a market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. So if it's going to make a big top like this, I think that's the point I'm trying to get to. It's probably going to fake out to new highs first before rolling over. Now, I don't know that. So if that happens, don't say like, oh, wow, Dave, you said it, that would happen. It's like, well, I don't know that's going to happen. We'll know it when we see it. Kind of like Justice Potter, Potter Stewart. The other thing is, a lot of these sectors are, are looking dubious in here. And I just grabbed a couple of them. We're going to take a look at quite a few more. But I grabbed software since we've been trading software quite a bit. And software has been kind of in a nice little trend earlier in the year. And then it kind of looked like it was going to roll over. And it's, nope, it took off one more time. And then, again, it looks like it's rolling over. It's kind of making this big old fat head and shoulders top look. Now, as I often preach... I don't trade directly off a of classical technical analysis, but I do pay attention to it. And also, if I have a setup and it's backed by classical technical analysis, then that's even better. So if I have a bow tie or something like that inside a big picture pattern like we have here in software, then I know that the setup or the market of the sector is negative and if i'm looking to trade that setup i think it's even better if i have some kind of big picture classical technical analysis backing me i think trading pure classical technical analysis can be a tough way to trade now maybe if you go back 100 years or even 50 years and people were still looking at things by hand there weren't a whole lot of computers around or any computers around then maybe some of these patterns worked out a little bit better but for me, it's like I, I would recommend that you learn all this classical technical analysis. Read Schaubacher, Edwards, and McGee, and then read more modern classics such as Pring and John Murphy and people like that. And if you go to my website under books to read, www.davelander.com slash books dash two dash read, there's a list of books I would recommend you read in technical analysis, trading psychology, and also in general personal development, which without going off on a tangent, you know, I know, imagine that, me going off on a tangent. But really this business is a huge part of it is obviously trading psychology. What is trading psychology? Trading psychology is really personal development. And I'm working on kind of a project with myself and I'm gonna see how it turns out. But so far it's been pretty good where I'm kind of, Remember, we talked a lot about the Kaizen way and all that, and I'm anxious to get my bookshelves in this weekend so I can unpack my books because I'm, I'm dying to get that Kaizen way book out again and thumb through it because what I'm doing is very Kaizen related. And if you go back to the books to read, you can get the, I think it's called the Kaizen way. And it's Dr. Robert Marr, I believe, who wrote that. And I'd recommend you read his other book, Conquering Fear and whatever else he's written out there. Good stuff. I saw him spoke a few years back at a conference that I was also speaking at, and I just thoroughly enjoyed it and immediately bought all his books. Anyway, long story endless, I think that conquering trading psychology, or you'll never conquer it, but maybe embracing it, comes down to a lot of personal development. I'm reading a book about habits now. 
And as I was saying earlier, I done some noodling around with this Kaizen thing. The Kaizen thing basically it says that you can't go in and make a big drastic change because you have a homeostasis that keeps you alive. And if you go in and try to make a big drastic change, you'll do good for a little while, but then you'll fall back to your old habits. And I catch myself doing these things all the time. And a, a drastic example, not for me, even though you might make a joke, maybe for me, but the biggest loser people, if you go in and do a little research on those guys, they went from being these fat bastards down to these skinny people. And a lot of them are now fatter than they were before. Why is that? Well, that's because they tried to make a big drastic change and your brain just, just doesn't like that big drastic change. More gradual changes are much easier to deal with. So for me, I'm working on this, like I said, this Kaizen project where I'm writing down little tiny things that I'm gonna do to help make a gradual change and gradual improvement. And I'll give you an example. I just grabbed the card out of my trading journal and I'm gonna read this little card before I take every trade. Now that doesn't really shock my brain too much. That doesn't alert my lower limbic system or whatever to throw off an alarm and, and whatever. It's just, I'm just gonna read the card. What harm could that do? And the card says, I, Dave Landing, will take the best and leave the rest ogre and trend trades, even if this means passing on okay opportunities and watching them occasionally take off without me. That's one of my big problems is some people have a hard time getting into trades. I have no problem getting into trades. <laughs> I feel like I have to jump in. I'm type A type of person. I am very impatient, even though today's presentation and many presentations are often on patience, but I feel like I just have to jump in. So my biggest pain, and one of my biggest pains is watching something take off without me that was on my radar. So I have to separate, and here it comes, I say it every presentation, right? <laughs> one day I won't, but today is not that day separate the intuition from into wishing, which is a quote from Sakota from the first market wizards. Go in and watch that too. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do is make a lot of little changes and make sure that I'm taking the best trades and not just trying to force things to happen. Anyway, I'm not sure how we got there from patience, but there's a lot of little things you could do like this. And as I, flesh a lot of these things out, I'll be happy to share them with you. But in the meantime, read the Kaizen way from Dr. Robert Marr, read Mastering Fear and anything else that he's written. All right, getting back to the markets, me go off on a tangent, imagine that. Let's take a look at health services. Now, software, by the way, let's just go back there real quick. Software is an area that we've been shorting and I'll show you one or two setups that we've taken recently here. And I'll show you some that have been on the Landry list that uh, have moved nicely when we get the live charts of time allowed. But health services, another area that I've been shorting. And if you take a look at it, it kind of looks like a big old picture top. And it's taken forever to top out. By the way, one thing that's kind of interesting, and I learned this from Greg Morris, as I think I've mentioned often, you, you think a market top is like this big event, like bam, you know, because the media gets all excited and it's like an announcement, like, hey, the market top, you know? And the reality is market tops take a long time. Most of the time, they're more of a process than an event. And that's why I'm paying so much careful attention to what's happening in these sectors and what's happening and the overall market. Now, I don't wanna be a fear monger. If the market goes on to make new highs and stay there as a trend following moron, I'm gonna to have to make sure that, hey, I'm seeing some backing to all this, but if it just keeps going, I'm gonna to have to throw in a towel and follow along. For now, I can't find a long setup to save my life. And recently, there's a plethora of shorts. I'm not seeing quite as many now and the reason is not because things are improving, but the reason is because most all of them 
have triggered and have begun to sell off strongly. So not too happy or not feeling great when I look at this market internally, but as usual, take days one day at a time. Now, it also helps to have a little bit longer term perspective. And here we have the TFM 10% system. I've beat this system to death. I didn't want to update it this week because I've updated it for so many times and I'm going on the rules ad nauseum. So go in and look at those presentations going back over the last year or two or however long, year or so I guess, however long I've developed this uh, little simple system. But basically we're just looking to exit a market when it gets 10% or more away from its 50 week closing high and there's no longer upside Landry light. Now Landry light just means that the lows are greater than the moving average for uptrend trends and less than the moving average for downtrends. And it's just a long only system and the whole genesis or the whole designer's intent of this system was just to get you out of the way when the market is in trouble. And it's kind of a testament against buy and hold where you could occasionally lose half of your money. But you can see we now have Landry Light and have had Landry Light for quite a while, ever since, so oh, I don't know, late May, early June, we've been above the 50 week moving average. Now, that doesn't mean I won't short a market when this is happening, but this is just one little piece of the pie that says, hey, Dave, you're shorting a longer term possible bull market here. So don't go crazy bearish. Make sure you're taking those partial profits along the way. Make sure you're trailing those stops. Make sure you're honoring those stops. And just keep an eye out for longs, as I always do. And you can see that we've been less than 10% away from all-time highs. And then that number is getting pretty, pretty close to zero, meaning that we, be, we will be banging out new all-time highs. The blue line here is your 50-week closing highs. Notice that it goes up when the market makes new highs, and then it goes sideways when you're not making new highs. And then the bottom line here is your 10% line, and that's based on 10% being 10% away. Okay, the blue line minus 10% equals the green line. I guess we could have made that red, but I don't want it to conflict with the moving average. Oh, I know why I made it green, because as long as you're above the green line, the market is somewhat okay, especially if you're also above the 50 week moving average. In other words, if the lows are above the 50 week moving average and you have Landry light, and you'll see that that's why I was bullish for this long, long period of time, because A, you were above the red line, which is the 50 week moving average, and more importantly, the low is above the red line, and then you were also above the green line. So very simple, longer term trend following type of thing, and I'm kind of amazed that something this so darn simple can actually work. And I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. So, and I'm not trying to sell you on a system, I'm giving it away. The other thing that's been a, a concern is there's been some debacle du jours lately. And I didn't have time to get the charts in here, but we'll take a look at some of those, uh, specifically things such as TXN. Now, Lately, this has been a market of patience. And as I said earlier, virtually every position that we've gotten into over the past couple of months has not worked out initially, but eventually did. So let's take a look at PAGS, which was in the trading service. We had a bit of a, what I would call a pioneer first for us, meaning that it's not a big fat first thrust where market just implodes and, and retraces a little bit, but rather it comes up and sells off a little bit and then pulls back. Now, Pioneer, because like the American Pioneers, number one, you're early and you're either to get the gold or the arrows in your back. Now, the chance of the gold makes trading these transitional patterns all worthwhile. Now, I'm just seeing something here or seeing something again, I should say. As I look at this pattern, remember earlier I said classical technical analysis, learn it, but make sure you have a setup. So we have a setup here, which is a first thrust, okay? But we also have, what is this? This is a shoulder, 
This is a head and this is a shoulder. And when it comes to head and shoulders, and I could have drawn this a little bit higher, it's this peak here. I like to see the right side higher than the left. And I don't know where I learned that. I don't know if I learned that directly from a text or just through all this empirical research, looking at thousands and thousands of charts. Last time I counted, I forget how many, it was probably like 10 years ago, but I think I was up to about a million charts that I've looked at over my career. And you could easily do the same thing. In fact, I time myself sometimes and it depends on the market conditions and depends on how much, how many stocks have to stop to write down and make a note of or whatever. But lately, I could probably get through 1,200 stocks, 1,300 stocks in about 15 minutes. So roughly, whatever that equates out to, 100 a minute, uh, at least somewhere around that area. And I'm going through them pretty quickly. And I've learned to recognize what's good, what's bad. And I can, again, get through those stocks really quickly. And the thing I've been doing lately is just trying to do it without letting my ADD kick in. So anyway, head and shoulders, top, look at here, kind of a micro first thrust, or as I prefer to call them, a pioneer first thrust happening. And then let's break it down. So there's your first thrust. And our entry was, as you can see on the bottom, 44.50. 52.50 was a protective stop, and 36.50 was the initial profit target. So here's our, here's our entry. Our stop was up here. But Dave, why is the stop way up there? Well, I want to stop at a place where if it hits a stop, I know I'm wrong, really wrong. So you could even go as far as new highs in a case like this. That had only been like an extra point or so. If you're short a market and it goes on to make new highs, then you're wrong, as our Twitter in chief would say. I did a presentation on that, by the way, just yesterday. If you look on my website later today, I'll have that posted. That was my stock charts show for the week. So your stop's way up here. Your initial profit target is right here. And it's eight points both ways. Remember, the initial profit target is the same distance as the stop. It's a one-for-one one thing. But Dave, doesn't it have a negative expectancy? Well, it does have a negative expectancy, meaning that you make less than you possibly lose because you're going to be wrong more than you're right, more than likely, or you could be wrong, wrong big, and you're not going to be right big if you're taking those initial profit targets. But the secret sauce and the real money comes in when you're able to ride out these longer term trends. A little bit harder to do on the short side, so I might not have any great examples for you for a while. But every now and then, we'll ride one down to the ground, which is a tremendous amount of fun. But longer term, that's where the money is, and that's how you beat the negative expectancy. Now, this is what happened in the stock. It triggers, and then what happened? Well, it went up, and then went up, and then it went down a little bit, then it went up, and then it went down a little bit, and then... We had one day when we were in the black, meaning that we're making money because the stock was worth less than what we shorted it for. And then it went all over the place and sideways. So what's that, about one to two, maybe three weeks or so, we're sitting in this stock wondering what the hell, somebody new to Dave Landry's core trading service was thinking, boy, why in the hell are we sitting in this stock? This is dead money. Now, paraphrasing, I think it's Investopedia. Dead money is money that has no chance of making any further gains. Well, if I knew that this stock would not move in my favor, then by all means, I would get out of the way. But you don't know that. In fact, that would be the holy grail if you think about it. There's so many things in this business. If you knew it would be the holy grail and you would own the world. So if I got into position today and I knew the position wasn't gonna work out, I'd just get out later today. Case closed, I'm done. And then if I get into position, it's like, well, this one's gonna work, I'm just gonna stay with it. But obviously you don't know that. So I believe in just having a stop in place where you're gonna be wrong and realize that your timing isn't gonna be absolutely perfect. Every now and then it is, okay, like that, RUHN trade we had a few weeks back, went up 60% in one day. Well, like they say in the diet industry, results not typical. More often than not, 
positions will go against you. Now, there's an old Wall Street adage that says all shorts will go against you. And boy, that sure does seem to be true. So let's look at what happened. So three or four weeks in this trade, right about the time you're willing to give up or you want to give up, what happens? The stock implodes, bangs out the initial profit target. Now let's take a look at tractor supply. So tractor supply had a nice little thrust lower after all time highs, little bit of a pullback. So that's a first thrust, or if you prefer to call it a pullback. And then here's our parameters. There's that rune trade, by the way, in case you're looking for it. We were going to buy at 520, stop at 420. That seems kind of crazy, but that's what the stock called for. And then it went up 60% in one day. So obviously we got the volatility right on that one. Okay. Unfortunately, it just went up and then came back in, which kind of sucks. I'd much rather a stock go up a little bit, hit the initial profit target, and then sit in, sit in that stock for the next year or two and make 150 or 200 or 300% as opposed to make 60% in one day. Look like a genius for a day, but that, that fades really quick. All these people, and I'm going to stop short of cursing. I, was, I need to clean up my act a little bit. I realize that. <laughs> Contractors next door are like, sir, can you, can you keep that language down? <laughs> I'm half kidding. Anyway, so it pulls back a little bit. We're going to sell short, and then our stop is up here. Now, this one's really, really interesting. Now, initial profit target is way down here. So what happens? It triggers, and then it starts going up and up and up and up and up. So we're in this trade for a week and a day, and it's going strongly against us. And we are a hurting pup. Truth be told, I dropped a death bomb or two, especially on that wide range bar higher. And I'm like, wow, boy, do I have a stinker here. And those poor people that are following along are probably hating me. So what would Dave Landry do? Well, I've got a stop in place. If the stop gets hit, I have to get out. I'm wrong. But as long as it doesn't get hit, I'm going to hold the course. Now, holding the course is not easy because you're losing your butt. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, according to Einstein, and expecting a different outcome. Well, losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money on a trade and expecting that trade to work is probably the definition of insanity. But right about that time, right about when you're suffering all that pain and you're getting ready to get stopped out. And what was the adage I said earlier? The market will do what it has to do to punish the most people, to cause the most pain to the most people. I need to look at all those adages to make sure I get them right. But essentially, if you've been trading for more than a day, you'll know that the market is kind of a perverse being. And, it, and it's, not really, it's not really the market that's being perverse. That's all in your head, right? Your feelings about the market or not what the market really is. But before I digress into a big old psychological tirade like I did earlier, the bottom line is it's hard to hold these positions, especially when they're really going strongly against you, especially in a case like this where you didn't have one day of profit. You might have had a few minutes of profitability on the first day you got in, but that's about it. And then, of course, it implodes. Does it always do this? No, of course not. That's why we have stops. If they always worked, we wouldn't use stops. And you can see it sold off and went down, hit the initial profit target. And we have dropped that stop down to break even now. And we're waiting patiently. Now we might get stopped out on this one. It just keeps working its way higher, working its way higher, working its way higher. Well, Dave, why not get out? No, because we're going to follow the plan. And the real money is not in that little swing trade. It's nice to, to bang one out within a week or two, within a day sometimes, like we did recently. But the real money is in that longer term trade, sitting on that stock longer term. Now, Jesse Livermore said the real money is made in the sitting, not in the trading. And there's he said that more than once. Different times, it means different things. But one way he means sitting it out, waiting for opportunities. And then another time he said it, I'm pretty sure that he meant 
sitting on a trade because he later talked about there be times when he knows the market will go as much as a million dollars against him, but he stays the course. Okay. Now we never know how much is really going to go against this, but point taken, he knows he's due for a retrace. If you're shorting stocks, you're going to get, you're going to have to deal with a retrace. It's kind of like the first night in Fight Club. You, you're, you're going to have to fight. So we trail a stop down to break even, and now we let the chips fall where they may. This could be Dead Money Report Part Two, okay? If this thing rolls over before hitting that stop. Now, here's an interesting example because this one hasn't worked yet. And I thought it'd be great to show you something. Those other two were both live, but I'd like to show you something that's dead money and still dead money. So we had a nice little TKO move, almost textbook in nature, especially for a gold stock at AUY. And here's our entries, and our, our entry, I should say, our protective stop, our initial private target, our risk, and then the pattern. By the way, it's a great idea. You could somebody was asking me about this spreadsheet, and they didn't understand it. So if we get a chance, I'll I'll try to walk you through it real quick. If you are a member of DaveLander.com, a gold member. If you look under the members dashboard, there's a members resource page, resource page, easy for me to say. And I put things like the spreadsheet in there. In fact, we have time. Let me just show you real quick what's happening with this spreadsheet. So, and the point I wanted to make earlier is that what's one of my little Kaizen things. Remember I told you some of that would find its way into these presentations over time. But one of my little Kaizen things is to I personally sometimes have a bit of a problem winging things. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have this spreadsheet in front of me because if the following the service stocks is really easy for me because I know that you guys are trading them and I want to trade them too so we can discuss them. So, but the thing I need to do more of that I'm guilty of not doing is just saying, okay, I'll just write down a piece of paper where I want to get into stock, what I want to do. And why is this thing? Off. and not follow it not have a, a formal plan all written out like this but where but when i have this service going here is i'm able to say okay well this is the stock i'm going to trade this is the action i'm going to take these are the amount of shares dave that's a lot of shares well it's a cheap stock and the risk isn't too great well how did you come up with the risk well i just figured that if it came down here after I get in that I'm probably wrong, which is below that TKO bar, plus a little wiggle room in this particular case. That came to 70 cents. My entry was above the TKO bar, plus a little wiggle room, which all this is gonna play out in just one second in the charts, in the chart. And then my stop, 70 cents below that, that 280 level right here, which gives me the initial profit target of 420. Now, these shares are calculated by taking 2% of a hypothetical 100K. I keep it 100K to keep the math easy, okay? If you have 200K, twice as much, 50K, half as much, obviously. And that's 2% 2, 2 if stopped out, which, believe me, is plenty enough money. If I lose 2000 on $100,000, I'm pretty angry okay it's big enough to hurt but not big enough to kill you okay what is it what doesn't destroy you makes you very very weak is who says that norm mcdonald says or as uh, nietzsche once said it doesn't kill you okay it's not going to kill you and it seems to be just big enough to work out pretty nicely if you get 150 percent gain your portfolio will probably go up about 10% or so thereabouts, which is a decent move for just one particular stock, okay? So 2% of $100,000 is $2,000. You divide that by your risk. So if you did, let's just say we're risking $1 per share, cheap stock, volatile, cheap stock, okay? Then that would equal 2,000 shares. So you can see in the case down here, we're risking 70 cents. 
So that comes to 28.57 down here shares, okay? Now, if you go back to those tractor supply stocks and all those other stocks, we were risking much, 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 much less because the protective stop on a point basis was a long, long ways away. And we could, we could back up since we got time today. Let's back that up real quick. This question came in last minute. So let's take a look at, there's a portfolio. Okay, now here we have the portfolio and lo and behold, just by accident, we have the AUY position in here. And that was on one of the few days that it was actually in the plus column. So let's look at how we track this trade. Now, it's not a round number, so it's a little bit, obviously in your own portfolio, you would trade 1,400 or 1,500 shares, or you would make this more of a round number. But we took that 28.57 or whatever it was divided by two. Now we're gonna put the whole trade in at once, but half is gonna be a trending trade for a swing trade, looking for 1%, that's the initial profit target. And half is going to be a trend trade, which is gonna be down here. And we're looking for unlimited profits on that. So TSCO, only 200 shares. Why? We had a 10 point stop. So every 100 shares, we lose $1,000. We, we wanna lose no more than $2,000 max. So that comes to 200 shares. So 100 would go in the trading loaf and 100 would go in the trending loaf. Now you buy them both at the same time, but for tracking purposes, you track them like this. And once this initial profit target is taken, you exit half of those shares. And then you, this stop is moved to break even. I don't wanna get into all the money management since we beat the dead horse on that before. But that's a spreadsheet. So you're risking 2%. You can't see it up here, but it says 100K. And that means every trade you take is $2,000. You can plug your portfolio size in here and all this is done for you. Minus one is a short and I have the formulas all calculated out here, okay? And plus one is a long. So we have plus one and plus one. If this short triggered 200, negative 200 means we're gonna be short 200 then it's gonna have a minus one there, okay? So hopefully, I know we got those questions in last minute and then have a formal presentation done, but just to get you up to speed on everything, that'll make a little sense to you. And go ahead and download that spreadsheet and I'll be happy to walk you through it. In fact, if you have any more questions, I'll walk through it in the next Q&A. You know, and a lot of these things, and not this particular one, but even though I beat the dead horse on a lot of these things, I have to keep beating the dead horse until you people get it. Somebody asked me about a PE on a stock yesterday. I kid you not. Let's get back to the chart we were on. So here's the AUI, again, trend knockout. There's a parameters down here. Entry is here above the TKO bar plus a little wiggle room. The stop is down here below the TKO O bar plus a little wiggle room. TKOs are kind of cool, especially when you got a really wide range bar like this that sticks out like a sore thumb, because you could trade them in a fairly textbook manner, meaning that you could put that entry fairly close to the high and you could put that stop fairly close to the low. And then your profit targets are automatically generated if you punch them into the spreadsheet. So our initial profit target in this case is up there at 420, something we're gonna need if this stock does not rally soon. So anything above that line, we're making money. Anything below that line, the entry line that is, we're losing money. Well, you can see that we spent a lot of time losing money and very little time making money. Now, initially it felt pretty good. We got in and first day we're like, oh, we're making money by the end of the day. Gave up a little bit next day, started making money again, made a little more the next day, gave some up, made a little, made a little, lost a little, lost a little. Now we're back in the minus column after what? Two weeks into the trade. And then for the next week or so, maybe even longer, we're back in the minus column. And then we had two little days where the market got right above our entry. And then it's been below the entry ever since. Well, that's a pretty serious 
dead money situation there. I mean, you go all the way back to August. Now we have September, October. So we got two months of mostly being underwater in a stock. What do we do? Nothing. It's still dead money. Now, you'll think I'm crazy for sticking with this stock, but I'm going to stick with it until I'm either stopped out or until I hit the initial profit target and my trailing stock gets taken out. Now, what I would recommend you do if you get really bored, and very few people are willing to take the time to put the effort in, and I realize everybody's busy as hell. We all be, we're all busy. That's just the lives we lead nowadays. So I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that if you want to get really serious, take a look at the Trading Service Archives. And if you're a member of the service, they're down here. And if you're not a member of the Trading Service, there, there should be a link somewhere on this page. And... If you can't find it, it's that big old long URL up there, which I keep meaning to shorten, but you can take a snapshot of the screen and, and go and find those. But take a look at those and see what happens works at all. Like I said last week, I used to put out my service on a delayed basis, but it became kind of a hassle because it'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna put it out three days late. Well, sometimes we might have a position that goes three or four or five or six or seven or eight days before triggering. So I'd have to figure out when there was an open position that had, or when there was an open setup, I should say, that didn't trigger and how to deal with all that. So I just started saying, well, you know what? It's just not, it's not really worth my while to put on delayed service. So what I do is I wait for like a month or so, and then I put them on that archives page and you can look at them. Now, if you want the service, obviously you have all of them available. And I do have history going back like 10 years, maybe more, and there's some gaps in it here and there. And, and one day I'm gonna to have to dig out all my hard drives and, and find out where those those gaps are. Okay, the screens are paused. I did not intend it to be paused. Okay, let's get that shared again. I don't know why it paused. Let's show it again. Okay, I must have had finger or something. Anyway, so that's the, if you, if you go back to the service page, if you go to the members area and log in, go to trading service page, whether you're a member or not, you can, there's a link on that page to the archives and for the trading service members down here, these are all the recent trading services. All right, I would encourage you to become a member of DaveLanner.com and then join us in the Facebook group. The Facebook group is really taken off and I'll come in after taking a break or walking away from the screens or busy doing something and I'll see you guys and girls have a lot of interaction and throwing around a lot of good ideas and all. So I'm I'm humbled by the group and I'm learning a lot from you guys too. And a while back when the IPOs were hot and heavy for a while, they've cooled off lately, but they'll come back. Don't worry, I'm fairly confident of that. I was picking up a few trades directly from you guys. And, and so I've paid for my subscription many times early, many times over. So $47 a month, you get Facebook access and then you get access to a, an S ton of stuff. And I promise I'll make it worth you while. All right, let's get to the live charts. And no questions go unanswered. So if you have any que trading questions, we have live Q&A sessions and we cover everything. So let's get over to the live charts. If you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. A couple things I want to point out. Let's take a look at the P's real quick. So the P's, Started kind of strong this morning, not enough to really get excited about playing an opening gap reversal. I don't want to try to pick up pennies in front of a potential bulldozer here. Now, if we had a big gap to brand new highs and it started coming in hard, I might change my mind on that. But again, a little bit of an opening gap reversal today. Let's take a look at spiders. Spiders, you get a true open. S&P 500, not so much, okay? So opening gap reversal, we're up, what, eh, quarter percent. Again, not too far away from all time highs, but you still got to get there, okay? And once you get there, you have to stay there, right? As opposed to breaking out and coming right back in, which I think could easily happen. I don't know that though, we'll see. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, same sort of action happening there, decent day, but now it's back up to about where it opened. So it's certainly improving up about three quarters of a percent. 
NASDAQ looks a little dubious longer term or intermediate term, I should say. Has a bit of a head and shoulder top look to it. I noticed that the right shoulder here is higher than the left shoulder here, which, and, and again, I don't know where I learned that, but I, but empirically, I see it happen quite a bit. And my reasoning is when you have a shoulder here, then a peak here, people think on this peak, well, wait, it's going back to new highs. Why should I sit around and wait for new highs? I'm just going to get in right here. And then when, when this market fails, or if this market fails, they're trapped on the wrong side of the market. Everything I do, I have to be able to wrap my head around it from a psychological standpoint. I see some people out there using some crazy stuff. I doubt they're, I doubt seriously they're profitable. I would never throw anybody under the bus because you're only as good as your next F up or next few trades or whatever in this business. But I would be curious to, to know if some of these people using these arcane methods are actually making money doing it as opposed to just simple things that you could back with a psychological backing, with the emotional backing of the market's participants. Like the TKO, there's a lot of emotion in that. You know that players got knocked out the market. You know that people got sucked into the market on the short side. And you know that the market begins to take off, the predicament of these traders could easily propel your position high. Hasn't worked yet in AUI. Golds tend to be choppy and rarely play out perfectly. Not without a lot of angst, that is. But when they go, they can go, just like any other stocks. Let's take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty is a poster child for electrocardiogram. On a micro level, it tried to get going this morning, but it's come back in already. And you back the chart way out. I've been saying this, I know, ad nauseum, but you take a look at like a weekly chart. And you zoom in a little bit and you can say, well, it looks like a big picture retrace rally. And until we get past, let's just say 161 round numbers, I wouldn't be too excited about the Russell 2000. So a little concerned about that. Gold is, as a general statement, kind of hanging in there. We had this nice little pullback here, which set up quite a few stocks. And like I've been saying in the trading service, as long as, as, long as these lows hold, Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, but obviously it's certainly lost quite a bit of momentum in here. In fact, just so I don't get too full of myself, since I do own some gold stocks right now, just so I don't get too full of myself, if you look at my Landry list, you'll see a gold or two and a silver or two that are actually set up on the short side. I'm not in a big hurry to rush out and short gold and silver right now, but that serves as a constant reminder to me that maybe my initial prediction here might not be so great. That's one of the many secrets of trading is you have to go out and prove something. And when you prove it and you feel pretty confident in it, then find ways to prove yourself wrong. It's hard to do, because especially for somebody like me who scored about a 0% in agreeableness on a personality test. I'm not a very agreeable person. I thought I was, but that's only with the people who agree with me. Now, a lot of other sectors in here looking kind of questionable. Foods, well, I'm not a big food trader. I'd rather eat it than trade it. Um, but it looks kind of like a big top in here. We can throw some moving averages in if you want to help see things. By the way, this is a great example. So you're looking at this market and you just see kind of sideways and you might not see a top in place. But if you put in the moving averages, the bow tie moving averages, and as I've said, ad nauseum, an indicator really doesn't indicate anything because it's based on price and it's going to have lag. But it, what it might do is it might illustrate to you that a market is in trouble. So we put the bow tie moving averages in here. What do we see? We see that the moving averages have rolled over, turned down, and the bow tie has triggered after an all-time high. This market could have topped out. Could be in a keyword in that sense, but they did, the bow tie didn't work. Well, that's true. It didn't work. But sometimes, as I often say, that second mouse signal is the real signal. The early bird gets the worm, second mouse gets the cheese. But as Greg Morris says, you have to take all signals seriously. Treat all signals, as I often say too, 
and it's going to be the big one, Elizabeth implied. Let's take a look at health services, which I think was, I don't know if I showed this one earlier. Now the bow ties have turned back up here, but longer term, this just looks like a, a big old fat top here. And I wouldn't rush out and buy health services. The fence stocks have been breaking down as of late. If you didn't know anything, and again, I don't know what I'm gonna see when I hit this button. Oh yeah, moving averages turned down and crossed over looking a little dubious. Now, even some of these areas which have been doing pretty good, like retail, are beginning to falter a little bit in here. So they banged out new highs, but really didn't take out that prior high with that much vigor. And then if you go all the way back to the prior peak, really didn't take out that high with a whole lot of vigor. Now, I'm not a huge fan of three drives to a high, but it is one of those kind of classical technical analysis things that can work out eventually and the reason i say eventually is you can't time off of it because that top that top might take a long time to to form kind of reminds me of the uh what's the old keen saying a marsh a market will stay irrational a lot longer than you can stay solvent so even though it looks like it should be topping or it looks like a top it might continue to quote unquote top for a long, long time while you go broke. Let's take a look at the semis. The semis just a couple days ago were at brand new highs, but they really didn't take out the prior highs a lot of bigger. They imploded a little bit yesterday, which I think was probably based on the Texas instrument, the Banco de Jour, which we'll take a look at in just one second. And then today they're coming back strongly. So this market is having a hard time finding its way, but hey, based on today's action, if it continues to follow through, bangs on new highs, and it's trend followers, then maybe we're okay as far as the semis are concerned. But I keep an eye on the semis. As you know, big fan of the semis confirming what's going on in the overall market. What are the time periods for the bow tie moving averages, please? uh 10 simple 20 exponential and 30 exponential in the members area i have a plethora of presentations on that and i think there's some free presentations too but thanks for asking let's take a look at bonds real quick and then we'll take a look at the tlt bonds are looking a little dubious in here too kind of had that big picture retrace look to them and let's draw that in so we make these all-time highs in here then we come right back in Big picture retrace, stalling out short of the prior highs, okay? And then it looks like they're in a new leg down so far. As usual, one day at a time, but bonds, for now at least, I'd say stick a fork in them. But let's just see what happens. Obviously, if they go on, take out 145, go to new highs, then everything might be okay. But bonds are looking a little iffy in here let's take a look at so take a look at texas instruments yesterday it imploded in here this is a big thick company and i don't know how you'd figure out so what is that three nine what's the average volume let's just say that's 30 million, is that right? Average volume, I always forget because you gotta add two zeros to this. One, two, or three million. Anyway, so it's a tremendous amount of thing. Oh, could you repeat please? Yeah, I'll just draw it on the screen so you'll have it. So if you're looking at it, in fact, let's take a look at the bow ties here. So with the bow ties, and again, I'll give you my, um, I'll have to get a campaign up and running again, but I'll I'll give you my third book, Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks, where I talk a lot about bow ties. This one's a 10 simple, 10 SMA. And then this is a 20 SMA, I'm sorry, 20 EMA. I'm getting tripped up myself. E, exponential moving average, EMA. And then this one is a 30 EMA. If you take the start course, I get into those moving averages. I'm pretty sure I do. 
And if I didn't, then I probably need to add that in. So if you go to DaveLander.com under the free stuff, and I'll show you where that is in one second. So if you go to my if you go to my home page and then go here under more trading lessons, and then it's not gonna let me do it now because I'm not logged in. They must have logged me out. But there'll be a free stuff. So log in and hit free stuff, and then there's gonna be a start course. Take the start course. If you can't find it, let me know because maybe I need to do a better job of making the navigation easier. So I hope that helps, Alan. If not, we'll get we'll get you up and running. Promise. So for the most part, I think we're done with the market analysis. So if you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, feel free to do so. All right, Chris says, home builders are one of the few groups that have been trending, though possible TKO setup triggered in MTH today. All right, MTH. Yeah, T, it's kind of interesting. Uh, TKH, MTH, I'm sorry. Sold off hard yesterday. It's kind of a TKO. Um, let's back the charts out a little bit. You know, one thing that I'm not completely crazy about is that you had this huge gap higher. I'd rather see like a small gap here and more acceleration, but I hear you. So that looks okay. Um, HV, a little low for me. And the reason I'm not a big fan of low HV is because you're gonna to have to trade a lot of shares to make it worth your while. On the short side, I, I'm okay with a, a with a lower HV because it's a little bit less dangerous to trade with quite a few caveats, obviously. But for me to get it's hard for me to get excited about a stock with an HV of, of 20 on the upside, okay? Historical volatility. But yeah, I hear you, and that's not a bad looking setup. I just don't like a as a general statement, a low HV kind of stock. I was lukewarm on the trade for various reasons and did not take it today. Yeah, it's just not a it's just not a huge opportunity in here. Um, you know, the other thing, which is a little counterintuitive and hard for me to explain, or at least a lot of people don't understand when I talk about this. If you've got a big, fairly thick, kind of stodgy company, then they're not splitting the atom, okay? They're building houses, all right? And I know the barrier to entry is probably not that easy, but it's not rocket science. If a company came out tomorrow, raised a little capital and want to start building houses, they could probably hit the ground running, okay? If I was in the VC business and I was very happy with my builder, then I could give him a bunch of money and he could, he could start building a bunch of more houses, okay? So the barrier to entry is not huge, it just takes money, you know? <laughs> so that's one thing when, when it comes to like shorting stocks, something that tends to be a little bit more efficient. They're not gonna discover a new board tomorrow that's proprietary to their company that's gonna cut their home building cost in half and then the stock's gonna double overnight. Although this stock admittedly has done really well for a long time. So. I almost would prefer shorting these type of stocks on setups, of course, as opposed to going long, especially when you got a lower HV like this. Now, if this stock had a higher HV, then maybe it might be worth going after, okay? Thank you, I always like to hear your presentation. You're welcome, Alan, anytime. Agreed on most counts, okay. Well, if we agree on everything, then you know what, what good am I? We should probably uh, agree to disagree on a few things here and there. All right, Mike P wants to know about CLGX. CLGX. Now, what do you want to do with that? Is it TKO? No, I would immediately, and you're right, you answered your own question. As far as I'm concerned, I would immediately eliminate that as a TKO because of this huge gap here, okay? Now, back here, you had a gap. I would eliminate it back here too, but technically, Mike, I think this looked a lot better. If, if you said you were gonna take this stock back here, I'd say, well, I don't like the gap, but I hear you because that looks like a pretty clean and nice TKO. So you had acceleration higher, bam. That looks kind of interesting, okay? But as far as the, the big gap in it, like today, that's just a little bit too much. And then look back in time, you've taken out an S ton worth of trading with that. So I think I would pass on that for sure. All right, any more? 
while we're in the past, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Going once, going twice. Well, thanks again, everybody. And if we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much.